now i'm going to explain about a 1k by 1 memory chip so you know that 1k by 1 means 1k rows will be there okay 1k that is this, by using 1k you can calculate how many address lines you require and 1 means you are getting only one output that is value of a single cell you are getting as output so first of all we can check how many address lines are needed in order to get uh, 1k you all know that 1k 1 kilobyte is equal to 2 to the power 10 so how many address lines are needed 10 address lines are needed and uh, here we can see that uh, since we are using uh, 10 address lines we are just arranging the 1k of memory as a 32 by 32 memory cells. 32 by 32 means 32 rows are there, 32 columns are there. But finally we are getting only one output. That is since one data line is there, we will get the value from one single cell. So we can see how this arrangement, we can explain this figure. So the arrangement is that it is 32 by 32 memory cell array. Just imagine it as a, an array which contains 32 rows and 32 columns. So first of all, in order to identify our first step is we have to identify any one of the 32 rows. So we are using the word line. Since 32 rows are there, W0 to W31 are 32 word lines. And at a time, any one of the word line will be activated. 32 is equal to 2 to the power 5. So, out of 10 address lines, only 5 bits, 5 address lines are passed to a 5 bit decoder and which will output or which will activate any one of the word line. Okay. So, we are just explaining this 1K by 1 memory chip. 1K is 2 to the power 10. So, 10 address lines will be there. So, in our figure, we are just explaining, we are just uh, uh, designing the 1 kilobyte of memory as a 32 by 32 memory cell. So, you can imagine an array which contains 32 rows and 32 columns are there. We are outputting the, out, uh, we are, uh, outputting the final result after two steps. You can see these two. These are the two steps we are performing and finally you will get the output. So, your first step, our, our first plan is, 32 by 32 memory cells are there as I said that is 32 rows and 32 columns are there. My first aim is I want to output any one of the 32 rows. That means we know that we can activate any one row of cells by using appropriate word line. Here 32 is equal to 2 to the power 5 so 5 address lines among the 10 address bits. The first five address lines are given to a 5-bit decoder which will activate any one of the 32 word line that will activate all rows, all 32 cells in corresponding rows. So, the sense right circuit will sense the corresponding values of all 32 rows and that will be given as input to a multiplexer and the input D multiplexer. That is here, any one of the 32 rows will be selected first. And what is our next aim? We have 5 more address lines are here. So, using the rest 5 bit column address, we will uh, activate any one of the cell from the 32 rows. So, your output will be any one cell from the corresponding 32 by 32 memory cell. So, this is the explanation of this figure. So, 10 bit address. We are using first 5 bit as uh, column ad row address to activate any one of the th 32 uh, row and the rest of after selecting particular row that means you just imagine any one of the 32 row, 32 row is activated and after that it will be outputted here and uh, using the next 5 column address any one cell from the 32 row will be activated and that will be outputted. Output. So now the design is 1 kilobyte by 1 memory structure. 1 kilobyte we are just arranging as 32 by 32 cell. 
and one means that since only one in our data line is there we have to select any one cell from the 32 by 32 array so you imagine a 32 row 32 column memory cell arrangement a matrix from which we want to output any one cell any particular cell value we want to output and for that purpose we are using this design so first five bits are used uh, in order to identify row and next five bits after after identifying a row 30 any one of the 32 row we are using the next five bits in order to select a particular uh, cell so this is a memory chip of 1k by 1 memory chip and its design so so far we discussed about the ram introduction to ram and uh, some of the problems related to ram how the ram uh, cell is uh, arranged like that so now we want to study in detail about the types of ram mainly there are two types of ram are there the first one is called static ram which is also called sram and the second one is called dynamic ram which is called dram the dynamic ram is again divided into synchronous dram that is sd ram and asynchronous dram that is ad ram so we will study uh, the first one now that is first of all we are going to discuss about static ram and after that we will study this one so this is static ram actually the meaning of static ram so first of all we, we have to explain about the advantage of static ram when compared to the dynamic ram the first thing is that the introduction point about the static ram is that as we as, as we as we can see that it is static the first term is static that means that this type of ram will retain its content as long as the power supply is there and we all know that ram is a volatile memory therefore both static and dynamic ram which are the two types of ram is also volatile that means it can store the values until the power supply is there so whenever the power supply is switched off or power supply is lost everything inside the memory this type of uh, ram will be lost and static ram is also a type of uh, uh, ram uh, it is called static because as long as the power supply is there, the values or the contents will be there inside this type of RAM. And uh, when we compare that, uh, that idea, we will get only after explaining the dynamic RAM, the second point. In the case of dynamic RAM, periodic refreshing is needed. So we will study later. Periodic refreshing is needed in order to maintain the content, contain, uh, contents there. But in the case of static RAM, there is no such periodically ref, uh, periodic refreshment is needed. As long as the power supply is there, the value will be there. The third point about the static RAM is there is that here we are using flip flops in order to store information. So that is, information are stored as inside flip flops. You all studied about flip flops in data uh, digital, so it is used to store the information. The fourth advantage, the fourth, fourth point about the static RAM is that it is faster when compared to dynamic RAM. Next point is it is more expensive and larger in size than dynamic RAM. So here in the last uh, few um, points we can compare, actually we can compare with uh, dynamic RAM. This is the actual comparison. The, these points are the actual comparison between the static and dynamic RAM. So, the uh, one advantage is that it is faster when compared to dynamic RAM. The second point, next point is that it is more expensive and larger in size than static, uh, dynamic RAM. And that is why we are mainly use this type of static RAM since it is expensive uh, and larger in size. Mainly we are using the static RAM uh, in cache memory. So, we studied, we will study in detail about the cache memory in the last module. And in order to uh, use, that is, uh, the, normally the cache memory is implemented by using the static RAM. So, this is, these are the basic points about it. And the last point is that, as we said, it is static. That means the circuits are capable of retaining their state as long as the power supply is applied. So, if you are storing any value inside the static RAM, the value will remain there uh, uh, until the power supply is there. So, these are the main points about the static RAM. 
So first thing, why it is called static? Static means this type of RAM can maintain its content as long as the power supply is there. And when we compare the static RAM with the dynamic RAM, its advantage is that there is no periodic refreshment is needed. As long as the power is there, it will, it, the circuits can store the values. Then flip-flops are used in order to store the information. And it is faster than dynamic RAM. It is more expensive and larger in size than uh, the dynamic RAM. That is why we are mainly used this type of static RAM in order to implement the cache memory. And uh, the circuitry inside the static RAM can store, can retain its state. That is whatever value, 0 or 1, whatever may be the value stored in each of the circuit. It can maintain its uh, contents uh, as long as the power supply is there. So these are the basic introduction about the static RAM. Now we will study how it is implemented. That is how a static RAM cell is implemented. So this is a figure of a single cell. And uh, it can store one bit of information, either 0 or 1. You know that this gate, it is an inverter, not gate, inverter gate. You can see that uh, two inverters are cross-connected. That is one in this direction, one in another direction. They are cross-connected to form a latch. And this latch is connected to two bit lines. You can see this is bit line B and this is the B bar. That is whatever may be the voltage or uh, value here. Its complement will be in this B bar. So two uh, bit lines are there, and this latch is connected to two bit lines using two transistors. The first one is T1 and the second one is T2. So two inverters are cross connected to form a latch, and this latch is connected to two bit lines using two transistors T1 and T2. Actually, the transistor will act as switches. And the next thing you can see is a bit line. As we said that in, if, if you want to activate any particular cell or any particular, this word line is extended. And here we are just explaining about a simple cell. And the word line is used to activate this cell. That is, if you want to read or write the value stored inside the cell, first of all, we want to activate the word line. So remember, this one is the word line and uh, these two are the bit lines. Okay. The vertical one is the bit line. The horizontal one is the word line. So now we can see how the values are stored in this uh, type of uh, uh, SRAM memory cell. And as I said, the two transistors are used to connect the entire latch to two bit lines. And the two transistors will act as uh, switches. That is, we can open the switch and we can close the switch. By activating the word line, we can uh, open the switch or we can close the switch. Whenever we activate the word line, this will be in open state. Whenever it is de uh, deactivated, the word line is not activated, it will be in the closed state. And uh, suppose that the word line is not activated, that is the word line is at the ground level, the transistors will be closed. That is the transistors will be not closed, the transistors will be off. So in that case, there will not be a connection with the bit line. So whatever may be the value stored inside the latch, that will maintain there. And if you want to store the value 1 inside this latch, the point X must contain the value 1 and the point Y must contain the value 0. That is when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0, that means that value stored inside the latch is bit 1. And if you want to if you want to store the value 0, the reverse action, that is x must be 0 and y must be 1. So this is the uh, way how the information will be stored here. That is, whenever the word line is not active, that is, it is in the ground state, whatever value is stored inside this, that is, the transistors will be off. So, whatever may be the value stored inside the latch, that will remain there. If the value of this latch is 1, that is, if the cell contains the value 1, that is indicated by the X must contains the value 1. That is, at this point, it must contain the value 1 
and y must uh, contain the value 0. In the opposite direction, that is whenever x is 0 and y is 1, that means that the latch contains the value 0. And this is how we will store the value. That is the value, how we will indicate that the bit, bit value 1 or 0 is stored inside the latch. So, as far as the word line is not activated, the latch contains the corresponding value. That is either bit or 0, a bit or, uh, 0 or 1. That is indicated by the corresponding x and y values. So, I think do you remember that like if x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0, the latch contains the value 1. If x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1, the latch contains the value 0. So, as far as the word line is not activated, the value, the bit value inside the latch will remain there. Then, the next we have to study is how a read operation is performed. If you want to perform the read operation, First of all, we want to uh, activate the bit line, the word line. So, the, uh, the word line, first of all, we have to activate. So, whenever the word line is activated, the switches T1 and T2, these two transistors will be closed. So, whatever value was stored inside the latch will come to the bit line. So, if 1 was stored inside the, uh, this latch, when the transistors are two transistors are closed, the value of x will be available inside B. The value of y will be available inside B bar. So, there is a sense like circuit is attached at the end of the bit line that will identify what was the voltage in B and B bar. Suppose that B contains the value 1 and B bar contains the value 0. That means that the sense like circuit will identify that the value stored inside the slash was bit, uh, bit 1. Okay. That is, if you want to next operation, we want to explain is the read operation in the cell. That is, we want to perform read operation. If you want to perform read operation, your first step, uh, first step is you have to activate this cell. And how we will activate the cell? By activating the word line. And whenever we are activating the word line, the two transistors will be closed. So, whatever value was stored at x position and y position, that will be go to two bit lines to this uh, transistor. And there is a sense right circuit is attached at the end of B and B bar that will sense what was the voltage inside B and what was the voltage inside B bar. Suppose that uh, the, if uh, 1 was stored inside this latch, this x will give the value here, y will output the value in this bit line here. If uh, b contains the value 1, that is the corresponding voltage which represents 1, and b bar contains the value 0, that indicates that 1 was stored inside this latch. Otherwise, 0 was stored inside the latch. That means, if b contains the value 0 and b bar contains the value 1, that indicates that the value stored inside the cell was bit 0. And that is how the read operation is performed. So, if you want to, so actually the sense right circuit will sense the corresponding voltage. By Whenever we activate the word line, the, circuit, the transistors will be closed. So, whatever voltage was stored inside this latches will output the values to corresponding bit lines. X will output a value to B and Y will output the value to B bar. The sense right circuit which is attached at the end of the bit line will sense the corresponding voltage and based on the combination, one, it will identify or it will recognize whether the cell contains the value bit 0 or bit 1. So, that is the explanation given here. If the state of the cell was 1, the signal on B will be high, that indicates 1. And the signal on B bar will be low. That indicates 0. If uh, the opposite is true, that is if B contains a low value and B bar contains a high value, that indicates that the state is state uh, inside the latch or the cell is 0. And the sense right monitors uh, will sense the B and B bar and that will give the output accordingly. So, here we are explaining this about a RAM. So, not only reading, writing is also, uh, uh, we can also perform writing here. 
So how the right operation is performed here? So as we said, if we want to write any value inside this latch, first of all we want to activate the word line. That means this cell will be activated. Then the sense right circuit will uh, give corresponding voltage to through B and B bar. Suppose we want to store the value 1 here. The sense right circuit will give a high voltage at B and a low voltage at B bar. That indicates that the value stored inside or that means we can store the value 1 in this latch. If we want to store 0 in this latch, See, high voltage should be given to B bar and low voltage should be given at B. So that give the corresponding voltage in X and Y position and corresponding value will be stored inside the latch. So the corresponding voltage is provided by the sense right circuit. So you can see it is sense and right circuit. The sense right circuit will work in the case of reading. The right path will work at the time of uh, writing. So this is how a SRAM uh, cell is uh, designed. So the first point I am just giving and our main points once again. It is SRAM cell as we said it is static because it will retain its content as long as the power supply is there. There is no power refreshing is needed. That is one advantage of static RAM. As long as the power supply is there it can store the value. The plugs are used in order to store the information. It is faster than dynamic RAM. It is expensive and larger in size than dynamic RAM. And it is mainly used for implementing cache memory. And the circuits can retain its state as long as the power supply is there. And this is the single, it's a cell. Uh, it's an SRAM cell. Uh, here two inverters are cross connected, which are connected to two bit line by using two transistors T1 and T2. Uh, there is a word line is there which is used to activate the cell. Actually the transistors will act as switches, um, switches and uh, whenever the word line is not activated then the switches will be the transistors will be in an off state. At that time whatever value was stored inside this latch that will remain there. Uh, whenever we, are acti we activate the word line uh, we can perform reading or writing operation. So first of all, how the read operation is, uh, how we, we can see that the value stored inside the latch is 1 or 0. If the latch contains the store the value 1, the x must be 1, y must be 0. If the latch store the value 0, y must be 1, x must be 0. Then how the read operation is performed in RAM, static type of RAM. In order to perform the read operation, first of all, your first step, step number 1 is activate the word line. Whenever the word line is activated, uh, the two uh, transistors will be uh, closed that will cause the value stored inside the latch. The value of X will be available inside B. The value of uh, that is the voltage of Y will be available inside B bar. And there is a sense right circuit which will send the values of B and B bar. And based on that it, it will output whether 1 or 0 was stored here. If uh, 1 was stored here. A high voltage will be available at B and low voltage will be available at B bar. And uh, if uh, latch contains the value 0, high voltage will be available at B bar, the low voltage will be available at B. And as I said, the sense right circuit will sense the voltage and it will output the value 0 or 1 which was stored inside the cell. In the case of right operation, first of all we have to activate the word line, then the sense right circuit will give the corresponding voltage based on which uh, the x and y will store the corresponding values. If you want to store the value 1, high voltage should be given at B, low voltage should be given at B bar. If you want to store 0 inside the latch, low voltage at B, high voltage at, C, uh, at uh, B bar. So actually the sense right circuit is responsible for uh, doing all these activities. In reading and writing, it is responsible for doing the activities. And uh, here we said, uh, we said, uh, we explained a, a SRAM cell in which the flip flops or latches, are, uh, latches were used. And we can also implement the SRAM cell using CMOS. Uh, in this case, the power consumption is very low. And these are the main advantages of SRAM. The first one is we can access very quickly. 
the access time is very less it is a few nanoseconds are needed in order to take any value from a particular cell that is access uh, and it is mainly uh, used since it is expensive uh, uh, and it is very fast we can use this sram in, in the application where the speed is a concern that is why we are taking we are implementing the cache memory we are using the static ram for implementing the cache memory so that is all about the static ram